For this project, we created a slider crank mechanism fitting into one cubic foot that allowed a cube piece to experience horizontal motion and acceleration, aiming to hit peaks of plus and minus 1g. In this video, we will go through some key concepts, including our design process and analysis, fabrication, setup and use of the accelerometer, and some successes and failures we experienced in each aspect. In this project, we needed to convert rotary motion to linear motion. There are a lot of ways to do this, but the design concept we chose was a slider crank mechanism. The way this works is that a crank arm attached to the spinning motor shaft moves a connecting rod, which in turn moves the slider back and forth. The slider has an acceleration that can be read by the accelerometer. We first tried to analyze the forces by looking at the movement of each individual part, but we found it easier to look at the displacement geometrically. As you can see in this diagram, the crank, connecting rod, and slider form, form a triangle. We won't include the entire derivation in this video for the sake of time, but using the trig trigonometric relationships between these components, we can solve for the position in terms of the angle between the crank and the horizontal, and integrating this position equation twice gives us an equation for, for acceleration. Using this equation, we can determine a combination of crank radius, connecting rod length, an angular velocity that will give us an acceleration of plus or minus 1g. In determining the sizes of the components, we started by finding a gear ratio that would give us that would give us an angular velocity that would create an acceleration within the correct order of magnitude. Then, since the radius has the greatest impact on the acceleration, we chose an arbitrary connecting rod length that worked for the size of the design. From there, we solved for the crank radius needed to produce the correct acceleration. In going through this process, plugging the acceleration equation into MATLAB worked well for, um, for working through the trial and error process, since we could easily, easily plug in new values and solve the equations until we, ha we, had, um, we had values that worked. When it came to fabrication, it was important for us to figure out how to connect pieces in a way that was secure, but also did not limit a range of motion. Originally, the wheel piece was meant to be attached to the gearbox using a set screw, but we ended up pressing it on directly, which still worked. We also chose to go with screws and nuts to connect the pieces, which worked, but experienced either tightening or loosening after the piece was allowed to run for a while, like this. Super glue was very effective in securing the connections. The accelerometer used for this project is an Adafruit ADXL335. One thing that is important to note is the axes and general orientation of the accelerometer since these impact the data taken. The X, Y, and Z axes are denoted on the accelerometer, so it is important to remember this as you are setting it up to track acceleration in a certain direction. The wiring is also important. From these six wires, the red wire connects to the power source, the third wire is the ground, and the four through six wires output data for the given axes. So there's X out, Y out, and Z out. Thus, when wiring, be sure to connect the red to the red, the two black clips to ground, and the probe to the wire that is outputting data for the desired axis. For our project, we attached the accelerometer to the moving cube part through a screw and nut, and oriented the accelerometer so that the Y axis pointed upwards and the X axis was horizontal. When wiring, X out was used to gather data in the X direction. We had to manually hold up the wire for the accelerometer each time we ran the mechanism to keep it out of the way, which was a shortcoming, so definitely keep that in mind when you design. And so after trial and error, our final product ran like this.